Hello, good morning! Welcome to our Philippine Politics and Governance class. Before we start, let us first have a short prayer. Hello again. So our topic for today is citizenship. The most essential learning competency for our topic is to explain the importance of active citizenship. Before we start our discussion, let us have the following activities first. I'm sure you can easily answer this activity. So you just you are just going to fill in the missing word. So let us hear your answer. What is in the answer for number one? Correct. Filipino. How about the next blank? Very good. Nanunumpa. The third one? Katarungan. Very good. How about the fourth and the fifth? Makatao at makabansa. So let's read the oath together. So ako ay Filipino. Buong katapatang nanunumpa sa watawat ng Pilipinas at sa republikang kanyang sinasagisag na may dangal, katarungan at kalayaan na pinakikilos ng sambayan ng makajos, makakalikasan, makatao at makabansa. What do you think is the importance of this oath? Or what is the message of this oath? Correct! It tells about our loyalty to our country. Let's move on with the next activity. So we're going to check how well you know yourself and your family. You're just going to write in your notebook or on a piece of paper your name, birthday, birthplace, nationality, your father's name, father's nationality, mother's name, and mother's nationality. So I'm going to give you three minutes to answer this activity. Okay, so let's hear your answer. I'm sure you very well know your name your birthday and your birthplace. Let me see, what is your nationality? Oh, you are a Filipino. How about your father? What is his nationality? He is also a Filipino. How about your mother? What is her nationality? She is a Filipino. Okay. Why do you say you are a Filipino? Or your father or your mother is a Filipino? What is your basis for saying that it, that it is your nationality? Let me see. Okay, because you are born in the Philippines, okay, that's a good idea. How about the others? Why do you say you're a Filipino? What is your basis for saying that you are a Filipino? Correct, because your father and mother are Filipinos. So in this lesson, you will better understand the basis for you being a Filipino. Let us check your knowledge on our previous topic first civil society and social movements so answer the following questions in your notebook or in a piece of paper i'm going to give you five minutes to answer these questions okay so what is the answer in number one yes it is civil society how about number two social movement correct number three very good. So, revolutionary social movements. How about number four? Civil society organizations. Number five, social movements. How about six? Very good. Institution. Number seven, correct. Social movement. How about number eight? What are the answers? Very good. Institutional space, distinct realm of values, and institutional mechanism. 
Now, for the next slide, we're going to check your prior knowledge on citizenship. So you're just going to determine what is asked or described by the following statements. This is a 15-item test, and I'm going to give you 5 minutes. You just have to write the letter of your answer in your notebook or on a sheet of paper. So this is the first set of questions. Are you done? We move on with the next. Okay, for the last set of questions. Okay, so even though this is just a pretest, let us check your answer to see how well ver versed you are in our topic. So number one, that's a letter C. 2, D, 3, C, 4, C, 5, A, 6, B, 7, B, 8, A, 9, D, 10, C, 11, B, 12, A, 13, A, 14, B, and 15, A. So how was your score? Okay, don't be sad if you think you did not do well with our pretest. I'm sure by the end of this lesson, you will be able to get a perfect score about our topic. Okay, so according to Melegrito and Mendoza, civil society plays an important role in Philippine democracy if the citizens recognize the principle of citizenship. It is a moral responsibility to self others, and community. This moral responsibility has to be matched and expressed with social responsibility in the same way as individual rights have to be matched with social responsibility. For our next activity, this was adopted from Philippine Politics and Governance Alternative Delivery Mode, Second Quarter, Module 12, Citizenship by Cecil C. Bavier. So you are going to do a self-reflection on your rights and responsibilities to yourself, to others, and the community. Remember the times when you failed to do your responsibilities, and remember also the times when you overlooked your rights and other people's rights and the good of the community. Construct a table like the one shown in the screen and write your experiences. So I'm going to give you five minutes for this. Okay, so are you done? We're going to process your answer through the next activity. So, answer the following questions honestly. You have three minutes afterwards. We will have a sharing of answers. Okay, time's up. Let us hear your answers, class. Very good realizations. Now, the next activity is entitled Guess the Word. By the title itself, you are to guess the word by rearranging the jumbled letters. So the first word, what is the word? Very good, it is nationality. Second word, yes, correct, it is citizen. How about the third one? Are you having a hard time? Okay, the third word is allegiance. How about the fourth one? Very good. It's very easy. It is birth. The fifth one? Yes, correct. Citizenship. How about the next word? Very good. It is participation. The next? Okay, so it's a hard one too. Okay, the word is repatriation. You will learn more about repatriation as we go with the discussion. The next word. Yes, apathetic. How about the, last, uh, the next one? Correct, ideological. And the last one? Very good, virtuous. Okay. So, before we discuss active citizenship, it is a must that we must understand or you must understand first the concept of citizenship. The following lecture is lifted from the book 
Philippine Politics and Governance by Rene C. Tabahen and Erlinda B. Pulma, textbook on the Philippine Constitution by Hector S. De Leon, and some parts were also lifted from Philippine Politics and Governance, Second Quarter, Module 12, Citizenship, First Edition by Cecil C. Bobier. No copyright infringement intended. Okay. So, Article 4 of the 1987 Constitution deals with the concept of Philippine citizenship. It states that, Section 1, The following are the citizens of the Philippines. Those who are citizens of the Philippines at the time of the adoption of the Constitution, Paragraph 2, Those whose fathers or mothers are citizens of the Philippines, Paragraph 3, Those born before January 17, 1973 of Filipino mothers who elect Philippine citizenship upon reaching the age of maturity, and Paragraph 4, Those who are naturalized in accordance with law. Now, for Section 2, Natural-born citizens are those who are citizens of the Philippines from birth without having to perform any act to acquire or perfect their Philippine citizenship. Those who elect Philippine citizenship in accordance with paragraph 3, section 1 hereof, shall be deemed natural-born citizens. Section 3, Philippine citizenship may be lost or reacquired in the manner provided by law. Section 4, Citizens of the Philippines who marry aliens shall retain their citizenship unless, by their act or omission, they are deemed under the law to have renounced it. And Section 5. Dual allegiance of citizens is inimical to the national interest and, should, and shall, be dealt with, with, shall be dealt with by the law. Okay, so Article 4 basically talks about the citizens of the Philippines. But what is citizenship? Citizenship is a term denoting membership of a citizen in a political society which membership implies reciprocally a duty of allegiance on the part of the member and a duty of protection on the part of the state. So I have highlighted here the keywords of the term citizenship. One of those is citizen. Who is a citizen? A citizen is a person having the title of citizenship. A member of a democratic community who enjoys full civil and political rights and is accorded protection inside and outside the territory of the state. Along with other citizens, they compose the political community. The citizens of the Philippines, as I stated earlier, is mentioned in or enumerated in Section 1 of Article 4 of the 1987 Constitution. Okay, so here are the modes or methods of acquiring citizenship. We have two, involuntary method and voluntary method. Involuntary method is by birth, which is maybe because of blood relationship or through the principle of use sanguinis or by place of birth or the principle of use soli or use lossi. And under the voluntary method, we have by naturalization except in case of collective naturalization of the inhabitants of a territory which takes place when it is ceded by one state to another as a result of conquest or treaty. Okay, so these two modes of acquiring citizenship corresponds to the two kinds of citizens, the natural born and the naturalized citizens. So to what method do you think the natural born citizens belong to? Very good, they are under... The involuntary method, by birth, natural-born citizens. On the other hand, naturalized citizens uses the voluntary method. Okay, so we have earlier stated who are the citizens of the Philippines, but let me repeat it. They are those who are citizens of the Philippines at the time of the adoption of the Constitution, which is our present Constitution, the 1987 Philippine Constitution. Those whose fathers or mothers are citizens of the Philippines, those born before January 17, 1973, of Filipino mothers who elect Philippine citizenship upon reaching the age of majority, and those who are naturalized in accordance with the law. Okay. So, as I stated earlier, the two types of citizens are the natural-born citizens and the naturalized citizens. 
So natural born citizens are those who are citizens of the Philippines from birth without having to perform any act to acquire or perfect their Philippine citizenship. So they are citizens by birth. So when we say citizens by birth, we have two principles that govern them. The first principle is the principle of eusanguinis, which uses blood relationship as the basis for acquiring citizenship. Therefore, children naturally follow the citizenship of their parents or one of them. As is stated in Article Section 1 of Article 4 of our present Constitution, those whose fathers or mothers are Filipinos are automatically Filipinos. So you do not need that your both parents have to be Filipinos. Either one, you are naturally a Filipino. So, predominating principle in the Philippine citizenship is the use sanguinis. Now, the second principle is the use soli or use lossy. So, the place of birth is the basis of acquiring citizenship. A person becomes citizen of the state where he is born, irrespective of the citizenship of his parents. Okay. So, the other type of citizenship is the naturalized Filipinos. Before you become a naturalized Filipinos, you must undergo a certain process, and that process is called naturalization. Naturalization is the act of formally adapting a foreigner or alien into the political body of the state and clothing him with the rights and privileges of citizenship. It is the voluntary method of acquiring citizenship by renouncing his former citizenship or embracing a new one. Okay, if there are methods on acquiring citizenship, there are also ways on how one will lose their citizenship. Actually, they are the same method, the voluntary method and involuntary method. Under the voluntary method, we have by naturalization in a foreign country, by express renunciation of citizenship, by subscribing to an oath of allegiance to support the constitution and laws of a foreign country, and by rendering service to or accepting commission in the armed forces of a foreign country, except under certain circumstances. Under the voluntary method, we have by cancellation of his certificate of naturalization by the court, and by having been declared by competent authority a deserter of the Philippine army, are the Philippine Armed Forces in time of war and through expatriation. Okay, the voluntary loss of or renunciation of one's nationality is called expatriation. In time of war, however, a Filipino cannot expatriate himself. However, if a Filipino lost his citizenship, he may still reacquire it. How? Here are the methods. First, by naturalization, provided the applicant possesses none of the disqualifications provided in the naturalization laws. Next, by repatriation of deserters of Philippine Armed Forces and women who lost their citizenship by reason of marriage to an alien after the termination of marital status and by direct act of Congress of the Philippines. In case of number two, in case of repatriation, it is effected by merely taking the necessary oath of allegiance to the Republic of the Philippines and registering the same in the proper civil registry. We also have Republic Act No. 9225, or also known as Citizenship Retention and Reacquisition Act of 2003. It states there that natural-born citizens of the Philippines who have lost their Philippine citizenship because of their naturalization as citizens of foreign country are at this moment deemed to have reacquired Philippine citizenship upon taking oath of allegiance to the Republic. Okay, so it mentioned there allegiance. On Section 5 of Article 4 of the 1987 Constitution, the issue is about dual allegiance. So Section 5 prohibits more particularly naturalized Filipinos from practicing dual allegiance declaring it inimical to national interest and requiring it or requiring it to be dealt with by law. How, however, what is dual allegiance? Dual allegiance refers to the continued allegiance of naturalized nationals to their mother country even after they have acquired foreign citizenship. So, kumbaga, ito ay mga doble kara. Yung Filipino na, however, they are still loyal or they still have allegiance to their original country. So, you must remember that dual allegiance is different with dual citizenship. 
what is dual citizenship? It refers to the possession of two citizenship by an individual, that of his original citizenship and that of the country where he became a naturalized citizen. Take note that Section 5 of Article 4 of the 1987 Constitution does not prohibit dual citizenship. It prohibits dual allegiance. Dual citizenship arises because our laws cannot control laws of other countries on citizenship. While it is not per se objectionable, the status of dual citizenship may be regulated or restricted by law where it is conducive or could lead to dual allegiance. Now, now that you understand what is citizenship, what do you think goes with this title? Any ideas, class? Yes, because you are a member of a political community, because you are a citizen, you must realize that for every right you have as a citizen, as a member of the political community, there is also a corresponding duty. If people are aware not only of their rights but also of their obligations, there will be less misunderstanding and less conflict in the society. Rights become fully enjoyable only when all the citizens without exception comply loyally to all their obligations. The enjoyment of rights becomes sufficient and real to the degree that citizens willingly carry out their obligations. So, I'm going to give you some of the duties and obligations of a citizen. Okay, because you are a citizen, you have the right or you have the duty to be loyal to the republic. You have to defend the state, to contribute to the development and welfare of the nation or of the state, to uphold the constitution and obey the laws, to cooperate with duly constituted authorities, to exercise rights responsibly and with due regard for the rights of others, and to engage in gainful work and to register and vote. Now, I want you to reflect. Were you able to do these duties and obligations as a citizen of our country, as a Filipino? Are you able to do these duties and obligations? If yes, very good. You are the kind of citizens that our country need. need. If not, do not worry. Now that you know your duties and responsibilities or duties and obligations as a citizen, you can now start doing them. We now move on with the next topic, that is active citizenship. Okay. The key element in citizenship is an in-depth understanding of an individual's environment, backgrounds, and nature as a member. As stated earlier, citizenship denotes membership in a political society. The membership implies a duty of allegiance on the part of the member and a duty of protection on the part of the state. According to Bouvier, the Philippines is a democratic community. Its citizens exercise rights and perform duties and responsibilities in different levels with different reasons. Problems can be fully solved if the government and the citizens and its citizens work together for the common goals. The highest level of citizen participation happens when people or when the people have the dominant decisions over the government. As per 2009, SWS survey on good local governance, local government enjoys a more favorable public support from household heads nationwide with a good net satisfaction rating. This means participation can be fully realized if the government exercises their duties and allegiance in support for the people and vice versa. So, Rosenhaus uh, gave classification of citizens in 1997. This classification is according to individual self-environment orientation. So we, we have the four types of citizens, self-centered, apathetic, ideological, and democratic. Self-centered citizens are those who tend to ignore the needs of others and only do what's best for them. Okay, so for example, a businessman who lose his Revenue. Because of this pandemic, they plan to continue the unfinished work of his construction business without prior documents to open. Ano? So he only thinks of what's best for him. So apathetic 
citizens are showing lack of feeling or interest in participating activities, insensitive and lack a sense of purpose while an act is being done. Most of the time, a pathetic citizen is passive. So these citizens are those who do not care about what is happening. Ano? So for example, a student during this new normal education who does not or does not care whether he passed or failed. He is apathetic. So we have ideological. These citizens based the act on the society's common beliefs, norms, and participation. This person takes sides because are based on the majority decisions as a safe haven to act. Okay, so for example, during the onslaught or the because of the COVID-19 pandemic, there has been a rise in the racism about Asians because uh, the pandemic originated in Asia. So they are being discriminated in Western countries. So these are ideological. Although there are laws to protect the citizens from this discrimination from the Asians, it is still prevalent because of their belief that we are the cause of or the Asia it is in Asia where the COVID-19 originated so the last type of citizen is democratic democratic citizens have a list of good qualities and attitudes important in a functioning democracy among the four types of citizens democratic citizens best result to engaging citizenship but it is subjective to personal and group orientation so we move on with the qualities of good citizen. Okay, so Galston listed four types of civic virtues of a citizen that are required for a flourishing democratic. So according to Galston, these are the virtues of a citizen. We have the general virtues, the social virtues, economic virtues, and the political virtues. General virtues covers courage, law-abidingness, and loyalty. Social virtues, independence, and open-mindedness. For economic virtues, we have the work ethic, capacity to delay work gratification, adaptability to economic and technological change, political virtues, capacity to discern and respect the rights of others, willingness to demand only what can be paid for, ability to evaluate the performance and willingness to disclosure. Okay. So, we have here ways to show good citizenship. First one is a good citizen is patriotic. That means he is proud of his country, its cultural values and identity. Next, modeling good qualities. Once people see sees it, they must follow it. Then it's channeled to one person to another. Next is being productive. It makes positive contribution contribution not only to yourself or to oneself, but to the society. Fourth. Being informed. Remember that knowledge is power. Fifth, being vigilant. To ascertain that government is doing well. Next, being socially active. Participation to solve the problems makes the problem less complicated. Next, being politically active. We have here being politically active which means that you need you must exercise your rights next eight being a mentor make your own mark of legacy next being well-rounded be more productive develop more skills and acquire more information and lastly being orderly start small and eventually you will create order in everything as they say everything starts with a single or small step okay so we move on with the most important topic of our discussion active citizenship what does it does it mean to be a, a, what does active citizenship means it means someone who takes a role in the community active participation is important because of the issues confronting the society 
It embodies the old saying, the body cannot fully function without its parts. Therefore, every citizen must uphold the law and perform its duties and responsibilities like supporting the government's good projects or programs to achieve common goals. So, active citizenship is not hard for Filipinos. Why? This is because it is inherent in our characteristic through the concepts of pakikipagkapwa or holistic interaction of others and kapwa or shared inner self. Remember what we have discussed in Introduction to the Philosophy of the Human Person about these Filipino traits? These traits give us a sense of having common identity, belongingness, the togetherness, and not being alone. One's empathy to others make the kawanggawa or charity as the basis of many groups or organizations, especially the NGOs. These have great impact in civic participation. As we end this discussion, remember the words of Confucius. To put the word in order, we must first put the nation in order. To put the nation in order, we must first put the family in order. Order. To put the family in order, we must first cultivate our personal life. We must first set our hearts right. As is stated by Gandhi as well, be the change you want to see in the world. Okay? So, in the next activity, it will require you to review the concepts that you have learned about nation during our discussion in state, nations, and globalization. Why? Because based on your understanding of state, nations, and globalization, and Article 4, you are going to complete the data needed in the analogy organization, organizer diagram. So, this is just a comparison of nationality and citizenship. This activity is adapted from the book Philippine Politics and Governance by Rene C. Tabehen and Erlinda B. Pulma. You write your answer on a whole sheet of paper. I'll give you 10 minutes to do this. Okay, so your output, you passed it during the next retrieval of output. Now, the next activity will require you to interview a family member about the concept of active citizenship. You write your interview on a sheet of paper. Use the following wide questions. So the first one is, what is your citizenship? Next, do you want to change your nationality? Why? Third, as a citizen of our country, what is your contribution to it? Fourth, why do you think a citizen should do for his country? Okay, so for the next activity, let us check your understanding of our lesson today. Answer the questions clearly and precisely as possible. Number one. So I'll give you 10 minutes to answer this on a sheet of paper. 1. How will you define citizenship? 2. What is your citizenship? What is your basis? 3. How does one become a Filipino? 4. What are roles and rights and obligations of a citizen? 5. How will you define active citizenship? 6. How will you become active citizen? Okay, so were you able to answer them? Very good. That means you understand our lesson today. Next activity. So you are going to pass this as well on the next retrieval. In a short band paper, show five activities or things that you think a citizen should do for his country. You may use poster, slogan, or poem to show your answer. You are free to use any media that you like. Be creative and unique. And we have the following rubric that will be used in the assessment of your output. Okay, so you are to submit this next meeting. Now, to further process your understanding of citizenship, we will have more activities next meeting. Please do advanced study of the following. First, 
the elephant and the six blind men. This is a famous Indian fable. You are going to watch this. There are a lot of videos in YouTube and even online the fable is there. So listen to the story carefully. Reflect on how you can connect it to active citizenship. Be ready to answer processing questions afterwards. But since we have extra time now, I will let you listen to it in order to be sure that everyone has this chance to see it. Okay? So give me a few minutes to show you this fable. The Blind Men and the Elephant by John Godfrey Sachs. It was six men of Hindustan to learning much inclined who went to see the elephant, though all of them were blind, that each by observation might satisfy his mind. The first approached the elephant and happening to fall against his broad and sturdy side at once began to bawl, God bless me, but the elephant is very like a wall. The second, feeling of the tusk, cried, Oh, what have we here? So very round and smooth and sharp. To me it is mighty clear this wonder of an elephant is uh, very like a spear. The third approached the animal, and happening to take the squirming trunk within his hands, thus boldly up and spake, I see, quoth he, the elephant is very like a snake. The fourth reached out his eager hand and felt about the knee. What most this wondrous beast is like is mighty plain, quoth he. Tis clear enough the elephant is a very like a tree. The fifth, who chanced to touch the air, said, Even the blindest man can tell what this resembles most. Deny the fact who can. This marvel of an elephant is very like a fan. The sixth. No sooner had begun about the beast to grope than seizing on the swinging tail that fell within his scope. I see, quoth he, the elephant is very like a rope. And so these men of Hindustan disputed loud and long, each in his own opinion exceeding stiff and strong, though each was partly in the right and all were in the wrong. Okay, so did you understand the fable? The elephant and the six blind men? If not, you still have time to re-listen to the fable. Okay, so I'll give you a slide. Uh, I'll give you the questions that you need to answer next meeting. Okay, so the next, the other activity that we will be doing next activity would be to read the following quotes and explain what it means. So I'll give it to you because you are free to ask the opinion of your parents or guardians or other family members for a broader perspective. You may also... You are also free to check the dictionary or to fully understand the codes. I want you to be ready with your answers next meeting. The first one is by Melissa V. Harris Perry. Citizenship is more than an individual exchange of freedoms for right. It is also a membership in a body politic, a nation and community. To be deemed fair, a system must offer its citizens equal opportunities for public recognition, and groups cannot systematically suffer from misrecognition in the form of stereotype and stigma. The next quote is by Adlai Stevenson. 
As citizens of this democracy, you are the rulers and the ruled, the lawgivers and the law abiding, the beginning and the end. For more information, you may check the following references on our lesson. So, thank you for listening to me. Do you have any questions? So, for any questions and you are shy to ask it to me right now, you can find me at, this is my FB account, and this is my email. So, as my last words, be safe, stay at home. Thank you, and good day.